Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and welcome to part 25 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. Now that we have two working controllers, our walking controller and our vehicle controller, we can create a scene where both of these controllers exist at the same time and we can switch between them. This is going to give us the opportunity to have things like a character that walks around, walks up to a vehicle and is able to get in and start driving it. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be in our vehicle scene and we need to make some prefabs of some of the objects that we have in here. Namely our scene which creates the ground and the obstacles in the scene as well as our vehicle controller itself. So we'll go over to our prefabs folder and then we're going to take from the hierarchy we'll take our scene drag that down in there as well as our vehicle character. I'm just going to quickly double check that everything is zeroed out on positioning so that we don't have anything unexpected happen which we look good. So now what we can do is we can go up to file, create a new scene, and I'm going to I'll save the vehicle scene. And then we're going to quickly save this scene as well. Go into my scenes folder and I'm going to call this multi control. Now that we're in here, we can actually delete our main camera. We're going to be using cameras that are tied to our controllers themselves. So we'll get rid of that main camera. You'll notice you'll get an error here saying no cameras displayed, that's fine. We can drag our scene as well as our input manager. We need to make sure we have both of those, otherwise our, um, our controllers aren't going to have anywhere to be and they're not going to have any way to get their inputs. Then we'll add our player as well as our vehicle character. Now we'll notice once we add that vehicle character, the camera reappears and that's because our vehicle character has this chase camera attached to it. However, we're going to actually be starting with the player, and so we want some kind of camera on the player so that we can you know, see where we're going when we're walking around. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open up our player hierarchy, right-click on player itself, and add a camera. This is now going to be kind of the, it's not the main camera of the scene, but it's kind of the default camera of the scene. We're going to keep its tag though, you'll notice there is a main camera tag you could add. I'm not going to add that though, I'm going to just keep it as untagged. All that really does is let you access the camera.main kind of language so that you can directly affect a camera with kind of static functions, but we're not going to worry about that right now, or static access I should say. Anyway, so we're just going to add this camera and I'm, I'm going to reposition it because right now it's kind of pointing out of the back of the character here, don't want that, so I'm going to change this to be a position of on uh, Y, we're gonna put it at about six. Z, we'll put it at negative 7.5. And then I'm gonna give it a tilt of about 44 on the X axis. This I think looks pretty good to me. Gives us some nice space that we can see what's around us here, um, but you can certainly adjust if you have a preference. The other thing we need to make sure we do is in our vehicle character, I want to move this so that we're not sitting right on top of it with our walking character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over on the x-axis about five units. Um, you can go a little bit more than that. I wouldn't go any further than about eight units though because this is kind of, we've set a safe space in our um, obstacle generator that within about 10 units of the origin, nothing should appear. So just to avoid, you know, your vehicle suddenly overlapping with an obstacle at the start of the scene, it's good to keep it, you know, about five away. Like I say, you can have a little bit of wiggle room there. The other thing I want to do in here is I want to go to our chase camera in our vehicle, and I'm going to turn this off by actually completely deactivating this object. Because while we're walking around, that camera doesn't need to be doing anything. It's not going to interfere, but it will be kind of running and taking in information, and we don't need that right now. So we're going to turn that off entirely. We're going to save our scene. And with that, we are actually ready to kind of start switching from controller to controller. We're going to do this in a very basic way right now. I'm going to actually just kind of create a hard-coded um, object that's going to let us change the controller on a keystroke and then we'll kind of build in the functionality to be able to actually interact with other objects and start controlling them instead of our walking character. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure nothing's selected in the hierarchy. I'm going to click game object, create empty, and I'm going to call this controller switcher. I'm going to reset its transform. It's not hugely necessary but good for cleanliness. So I'm going to do that. 
And then I'm going to go into our scripts folder. I'm not going to do, go into any of the actual folders within there because this is just going to kind of be a temporary script. But I'm going to create a C-sharp script and I'm going to name this controller switcher as well. No space in there. And then I'll open this up in mono develop. Let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see what I'm writing. And I'm going to get rid of the start function. We don't need that. But I am going to keep the update uh, because what we're going to do here is listen for a keystroke. And if so, we'll switch the controllers. So in here, I need first a few public references to some of our objects. I need a reference to our input manager so that we can actually actively switch it, as well as our two controllers that we're going to be switching. So I'm going to put public input manager, just call it I am, and then we'll do a public controller called walker and a public controller called vehicle. I could make these a walking controller and a vehicle controller, but it may eventually be that we would want to switch different controllers and because they both inherit from controller, they'll both work in here just fine. Now we're gonna make a very simple kind of switch statement here saying if there's a button pressed, then switch to whichever controller is not currently active. So we'll simply say if input.getKeyDown key code and we're going to use, I'll use the V key. We're not using that for anything right now. And, you know, V for vehicle makes sense to me. And then I'm going to check if I am dot controller. And because this is a public uh, variable for us, this is where we were kind of dragging and dropping our controller into previously. We can actually just actively check this and say if it's the walker, then we want to change that I am controller to be the vehicle. Else we know if it's not, if we know that it's not the walker, we know it's the vehicle, so we can switch to the walker. So we'll say I am dot controller equals walker. And that's all that this uh, method really needs to do right now. Check which controller we are, set it to the other one. So how this all works is that you'll remember that in our input manager, we have this controller variable down here. That's the one that we're setting in our controller switcher. And this is really what keeps there from being an issue right now where we have two controllers in our scene, but you'll notice even, I'm gonna drag the player controller into our controller, here, into the input manager. And if I hit play right now, I can control this and the vehicle doesn't try to go anywhere even though it's an active controller as well in the scene. It's, you know, it's the script is running as right here, but the input manager knows that because the controller it's talking to right now is the walking controller, that's the only thing it's passing information to. This is really the advantage of doing this sort of a setup versus just using kind of keystrokes and, and um, programming your keys in Unity's basic system is that you're really able to kind of funnel the information to the controller that you want to get it. So with that in place there though, what we can now do is go to our controller switcher and kind of give it, give it A the class, controller switcher. And then we can add in this input manager that we're gonna to wanna to be controlling, as well as these two controllers. So we'll add in the player controller for the walker, because that's the walking controller and the vehicle character for the vehicle controller. And now what we can do is actively just tell it when we press the V key, whichever um, controller is not currently running, make that the new active controller. So I'll save this, hit play. I'm actually gonna jump over to our input manager. So you can see here we're starting because I just dragged and, dragged and dropped the player into here. That's what's starting as our default. I can walk around as normal. I can jump, I can even do my um, attack and um, attack and interact keys. You can see there, they're still lighting up. Everything is working as normal. Go back to our input manager. But now what I can do as well is I can hit the V key and we see that that controller now switches to the vehicle character. And now if I press the spacebar to accelerate, sure enough, 
we begin accelerating. Now, one problem is that we can obviously very quickly move off of the screen right now because what we're not doing is switching over to the vehicle's camera. And that's really the next step of what we're gonna do here is we wanna look at, instead of just switching from controller to controller, we want to kind of do a more comprehensive process of activating a controller, turning on its camera, making sure that the object is active, all those sorts of things, and then deactivating the old controller, turning off its camera, possibly turning off the entire object if we don't need it, doing things like that. So that's what we're gonna jump into in our next video. We're gonna start making this, um, these controller switching a little bit more robust, and then we can get into actually doing the switching via interaction versus simply having this control switcher, which is kind of a cheat for us right now, but gets the job done so we can see it in action. So we're gonna jump into that in the next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.